Okay folks, in today's teaching, uh, it's not so much a question that I'm answering, but it's a teaching from me to you. Why you shouldn't sell your artwork cheaply. Many artists think that if I price my artwork really, really cheaply, it'll sell out and no bother, it'll, you know, I'll build up a good reputation, it'll be amazing. This is not always the case. You can offer something really, really cheaply or really, really expensive and it may not sell. There are three things primarily that you need to be thinking about and guess what? Price is not one of the main ones. Yes, price comes into it, but it is more to do with the audience, the presentation and the product that you are selling. So, first of all, we're going to look at the audience. So we've got the price all worked out and if you haven't seen the teaching on how you should price your artwork, go and see that teaching. I'll tag it in this video as well so you've got it. Um, so it's the audience. If you're wanting to sell your work for 50 to 100 pounds, 130 dollars, um, then that is what we call the lower range audience, the very low range audience, okay? Um, and there are plenty of those around. They're going to give you work, but it's very difficult then to build up from that. I know, I've done it. If you are talking 300 pounds upwards, it's sort of your middle range audience. And if you're talking... £2,000 upwards, you're talking about a higher end audience. Anything above that is starting to get into the higher echelons of society, where your doctors, your nurses, your art collectors, that's the kind of thing. So you need to decide very, very clearly the audience you want to attract. Now, many of you will say, gosh, I don't care, I just want to sell my artwork. But the problem is, if you are selling a dog painting to cat lovers, they're probably not going to buy. And equally, if you're selling, you know, an Alice Cooper rock star painting to classical musicians, they're probably not going to buy. Do you see what, why it's so important to actually really figure out who your audience is and why they would buy from you? You sell dog paintings to dog lovers. You sell cat paintings to cat owners. You sell mountainscapes to people that love the mountains. It's relatively simple once you get into this. The product, so this is part number two. I've got quite a long teaching here, folks, so I want you to, you know, uh, come out with a pen and paper because I think you're going to need to write some of this down. The product, okay? So, another reason why artwork shouldn't be sold really cheaply. I want you to think about how much you want to earn from your artwork, okay? And if you're saying to me, gosh, John, I'd love to learn, I don't know, $20,000, right. Are you going to do that and how many paintings would you have to sell in order to earn that $20,000? Now, if you're selling everyone like uh, a good friend of mine, Mark Grossi, uh, for I think he's $120, something like that, for 8x10, 12x16 size canvases, how many hundreds and hundreds of paintings would he have to make to sell it at, or to make $20,000, okay? Now, Mark is a, is a dear friend of mine. I, I enjoy Mark's artwork very, very well. But I've always said to him, I feel that you underprice your artwork. But Mark has got the market that he knows. He knows it very well. He sells them at school events. He sells them at fairs. He sells them online. And people are sometimes just looking for that cheaper style painting. That is his audience. And any one afternoon, he can sell 25 paintings and make, you know, $2,500. Um... He can make more than that. So, you know, and that, that's if everyone that sells for 100. Um, you know, so that's, that's Mark's audience. He knows that well. For me, that's not my audience. My audience is more into exhibitions, into art fairs, into uh, galleries as well. And I know what my artwork is worth. That is why it's so important to know what you are worth. The third thing, and I will go into that in more detail in another teaching, but not just now. The presentation of your artwork. So, if you are going to present yourself as a businessman, you know, that your artwork is, is something very precious, it's something very, very, you know, special and really awesome, then that also has to reflect not only you, but your artwork as well. If you're going to dress in a suit and you have artwork that looks like it's been made with very cheap materials, it's been scrubbed on, it's been scratched on, unless you're a household name, and people are collecting your artwork, that does not bode well for you. Equally, if you dress like a slob, 
You are going to surprise people, don't get me wrong, if you've got these amazing paintings that look like, you know, the, 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 the materials alone cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, okay? You're going to surprise people, it doesn't work the other way, so you need to think about your audience and how you're presenting yourself to them. As I've said in live streams, whenever I'm doing these shows, with the exception of the live streams, I'm usually in a shirt. Because why? I'm teaching you business skills. If I turn up in a t-shirt, it sets the wrong tone, it sets the wrong look. And that's why it's so important to understand how to present yourself, how to speak, how to develop things. Now you might say, well, <laughs> well you know, I don't really care what the people think. If you are going to get them to buy from you, you have to start caring. Okay, I know a lot of artists now that will switch off at this point and say, oh, that John Morris, he doesn't know what he's talking about. No, I've only been doing this for 16 years and I make a full-time living doing this. Um, so, yes, I do know what I'm talking about. But guys, I just want you to think a little bit. I'm not asking you to change who you are. Just develop it a little bit more. If you are approaching the artistic community, you may dress like Iris Scott, full of paint, full of frills, full of feathers, and go around dancing around here, there, and everywhere. If you're, you know, a John Morris, for example, I work with a lot of artists in Scotland. Scotland is a very, very traditional country, especially the older community. They have been in churches, they have been in uh, women's guilds, they're in the art guilds, they're in the art institutes. They are the people that we're working with. And you've got to think about that when you're communicating with them. I'm not asking you to sell out, but if you want to make a full-time living in this business, you do have to change your approach a little bit for the audience that you're working with. It doesn't mean you can't be you, but it means that you have to really think, hey, if I say this, if I do this, how is this going to be received by somebody else? Anyway. So, think about who you are selling to, think about what you're selling, and what do you both gain from the experience? Now, the client always asks him or herself, what's in it for me? When we do these shows, as soon as I come on, I tell you what the topic is, because then you're either going to click off or you're going to continue watching. I always try my best to answer the questions that you need to know the answers to, like how to press your artwork, like what materials are best for you, like why you shouldn't sell your artwork cheaply, why it's important to set goals, all that kind of stuff, okay? So that's what you've got to be thinking. Always position yourself as the guide and the mentor with your client. Don't position yourself as the hero of the story. And I'll talk about that a little bit more. That's a Donald Miller um, term. Anyway, point number two. Why you shouldn't sell your artwork cheaply is this. It kills your business. It kills your brand and it damages the market for everybody. Okay, for example, Outreach Art, which is one of my businesses, we specialize in teaching people online how to paint. We, we aim at the homeschool network, we aim at community centers, prisons, all that kind of thing, right? So, we have courses, full courses from start to finish on how to paint, introduction to painting, how to paint the sea, uh, Myrtle the turtle in, in his underwater friends, uh, how to paint polar bears, all sorts of things. Okay, how to paint wolves, how to paint horses. We offer these full courses for £20, which is about $35 in the US, just to give you a, a conversion there. Now, what we found is the courses are fantastic. I've made sure that they're fantastic because I've done my research, I've done everything I need to do and made them as simple as possible. But what we find is a course for £20. Now, the, just, just side note here. The reason that they're £20 is because I sat down and thought, okay, for each course it takes me about four lessons with students that come to my studio and paint. So that's about £80 that they would pay, okay? And I supply the materials, I do everything like that. And I open my studio to them. With this, they're supplying the materials and they are literally buying it online, downloading and painting it. I have very little to do at that point unless they get into trouble and need support. There was another lady that came on around the same time and saw what we were doing. She said, oh, well, you know, I'm offering painting courses for 10 pounds. And guess what? I'm gonna give a reduction of 50% to anybody that comes on right now. And she's still got that reduction going on. So she's selling her courses for five pounds. 
My granny used to have a phrase that the dearest thing is actually cheapest in the end. Do you see where I'm going with this, folks? I looked on her website because a member of my staff sent it to me and I've got to be honest, the courses look like trash. They looked like they were only worth five pounds. They were so cheaply put together. They were done on a phone that wasn't particularly clear. The pictures of the finished paintings looked like childish scribbles. It wasn't professionally done, but what has that done? We've now taken our product and said, right, okay, we can't work. If, you know, if, if the homeschool network, and don't get me wrong, I totally understand, the homeschool network and parents are looking for things as cheap as possible because they have got a limited budget. I get it, there's so many things to think about, but for high quality materials, or sorry, for high quality teaching, you have to pay that little bit extra, but you know then at least you are getting great teaching, you're getting great guidance, and the support is there if you get stuck. The lady that's doing this, I'm not convinced, let's put it that way, that many students are going to come out of this and be like, oh yeah, that was great, I absolutely love this, you know. It doesn't teach the techniques as far as I'm aware. It just doesn't look good. It's not a good presentation, but that's fine. We can take our market and work elsewhere. That's just giving you one example. When people are saying, I'm just gonna give you another one. That's regarding uh, teaching materials because I know some of you guys are teaching. Regarding paintings, oh, here we go. I have had a lady approach me, and I'm just giving personal stories here. I've had a lady approach me in the last couple of years that wanted me to paint a picture of a horse for her. So I gave her our figure, uh, and uh, I said, this is what we charge. She said, oh, oh, that's, that's you know, really expensive. I was like, well, it's made with highest quality materials, it's varnished, it comes ready to hang, all that kind of stuff. It actually isn't that expensive, just saying, for, for custom-made artwork. She said, there's a lady down the road from me that makes these for £20, and she sent me a photo of, of this lady's work, apparently. Now, this lady's work, I'm not kidding you, was phenomenal. Absolutely insane, really good. I would even go as far to say far better than my work, which makes me suspicious because if she's selling them for 20 pounds, my question is why? If you're that good, you should be in a gallery. Now, maybe this lady, maybe she's a bit older, maybe she's a bit younger, didn't understand the business sense, maybe just wanted to make a few pounds here and there. But if you've got talent like that, she's someone I would love to coach because it's an easy sell. But what does that do? That damages the market for everybody else because then that person says, well, I can go and get this artwork here much cheaper. You want to know my response to that? I was like, if, love, if you can get that for £20, go for it because I ain't even going to try to match it. Okay, it wouldn't even cover my costs um, to try and match it. But here's the thing. What they don't realise is, yes, you can get someone else to paint it. It may be an unknown artist. It may be someone that can do a very nice job. And if you're just looking for a painting, that's fine. But what that lady was actually looking for was a John Morris Art From The Heart painting. We've built up enough rapport over the last 16 years, which, and this is wonderful when people say this, you know, I don't care what it costs, I want you to be the one to paint it. Because I trust you. See, you're building up trust now with your audience. That's also really important. Uh, and I just said to her, I was like, look, if you can get that done for 20 pounds, I'm not even gonna try and match it. We can't match it. Um, and all of a sudden you're like, well, if you've painted one really cheaply, why aren't you painting, you know, five and six really cheaply? Um, there are always going to be other avenues. Some clients you're going to have to let go. Others you are going to be able to work with, you're going to develop, and they will come to you. Does that make sense? Okay, so why it's really important with regards to painting and teaching and not to just give your artwork and teaching skills away is because you've got something really precious. You've got something very, very valuable. And you don't just want to turn around and say, oh, well, you know, here, you can have it for this. You know, something really, really cheap. I know, I started out, my first painting that I did was 12 pounds. It was an A4 canvas, and it was of uh, a, a little lake and some trees on top. It wasn't particularly great, but I did it. I earned 12 pounds, and that was it. But that job actually caused me more hassle than anything else. Side note here, folks, the folks that are gonna pay the cheaper side of paintings, in my experience, have been some of the most fussy people that just cannot make decisions at all. Now that doesn't go for all of them. Okay, some that have paid and that have paid in the 50 to, to 100 pound bracket, 
you know, they have been some of the sweetest, nicest people ever. Some of the cheaper ones, when I very first got started, they made far too many demands, but because I was a new artist, I would take any work that I could get. I don't mind if someone's paying me a thousand dollars to do a painting, or two thousand dollars to do a painting, they can be as fussy as they like, within reason. Um, because they're paying me and they expect a little bit more. Does that make sense? They, people can be really fussy when they're paying a lot. Don't allow them to be really fussy when they're paying very little. So, uh, part number three uh, that I just want to touch on this is your art is worth so much more than money. Okay, would you give a limited edition, I'm going to use Alice Cooper, Alice Cooper signed uh, LP, painting, artwork, guitar, whatever. Something really, really valuable. Will you just give that away to a charity shop? Would you give it away to, you know, just, just, you know, Hurry Henry and, and the Van Dange goes? No, you wouldn't. Why? Because it's something very rare and very special. Sometimes a client needs help in seeing how special and unique your artwork actually is. When you can say to them, look, we provide great customer service, we take care of you, we've got 16 years experience, it is a photo like painting, you know, you do this and you've very little to worry about, then all of a sudden like, well I don't mind spending that extra bit of money because the last thing that they want is hassle. They want to know that the job is done well and that it can actually be enjoyed and loved and passed on. It's made to last. It's made of the highest quality materials as opposed to some piddly little bit of garbage that's going to fall, up, you know, fall away in a couple of years or start fading or bubbling or doing this, that and the other. You know, you've got to just go that little bit extra but people will be willing to spend that money with you. So, you know, some of this may sound arrogant, but know what you are worth. Know your audience. Know the people that you want to attract. It'll take some adjustment. It'll take some realigning, but you will get there. I can speak personally from my own experience. Okay, I started out this business, folks, in my mom and dad's bedroom when I was 17 years old. John Morris, out from the heart, just rolled off my tongue, and initially we had a butterfly as our logo. A lot of it didn't make sense. A lot of it's only just started making sense within the last couple of years. Okay, from there, I had some amazing experiences in the United States. I came back to Scotland and my best friend evicted me while I was in America. He moved me into a bed sit in Air High Street. Okay, and I spent eight months there in what I called the cell, living in perpetual fear and torment. And it took years for me to actually get over that. Plus, the place that I worked with didn't really care. They left me there. And they were like, yeah, we don't care. You know, our job is to provide you with accommodation. We don't care where it is. But guys, I promise you, if you don't give up and you really think and apply it, what I'm saying here. So your homework for this week is, sorry, if you really think and apply it, what I'm saying to you here, you will be on a better road to succeeding in your art journey. So your artwork for this weekend, guys, is... Uh, what do you think about the audience that you want to attract? Not the one you're currently attracting, unless you're happy with your audience, but the one you want to attract. The second one is the product. So your painting or your teaching, where is it going to look best? Where is it going to be featured best? Who is going to buy it? So your audience and your product go hand in hand, and then your presentation. So you've got your audience, you've got a product. How do you present it to the world and to the culture that you want to build. There is a ton of great teaching online about that folks and I can help you with that as well about how to take photographs that look really good, that are gonna get attention. There's a very specific way to doing that as well online, but we're out of time. Guys, thank you so much for watching and, uh, and bearing with us uh, during all of that. I know it's a lot of information to take in. If you need to watch it again, go for it. Give yourself the best opportunity to succeed. Never give up and you will actually be able to achieve your dreams. Keep adjusting. Keep finding a new way to do what you love. And until next time, I've been your host, John Morris, the painter of memories. This has been Art Tips with John, the show that teaches you how to build your extraordinary art business and unleash your great, amazing artistic talent as well. Don't settle. Don't sell your artwork cheaply. Until next time, I'll see you soon.